today is the multiple clouds apps and as far as the Kubernetes and with MySQL app. So today we are going through how we do this running native cloud apps with MySQL and provide reliabilities like NoDB cluster and running on the Kubernetes. So uh, the first topic uh, it tries to explain the cloud native uh, overview. And the second topic that we today to go over is how we deploy MySQL and the reliabilities like NoDB clusters using MySQL operators that are on Kubernetes. And we will show the demos how we create the NoDB cluster and as well as how to create and deploy like using Hamtor or Yammer Manifest with the Kubernetes or PHP My Admin, and working closely how to do like external names with MySQL. So first, cloud native overview. So what's today people is looking at, and it's like okay, breaking down the system into pieces and working together closely. So that's uh, people call this microservices and small small pieces and working with our uh, closest together and then communicate via some sort of the uh, uh, protocol. And what to do very properly is like, okay, people do it with the RESTful, right? And the microservice terms, and in the old days, people do SOA or some other call during the old days, right? But today, people always talk about, okay, managing the system and by pieces and working closely. And uh, with the microservices, people have the small subsystem and data actually within the small subsystem. And not like in the old days, a big a database, centralized database, and everything connects to just one single database. That's why it's today, uh, many people start to have a small footprint of my, uh, database and just like my SQL does. So as the characteristics for these applications on cloud, so people will leverage other services on cloud, no matter this is like, okay, some other AI services like uh, uh, machine learnings, and as well as some other intelligence service or even, okay, loosely carpet integrations, orchestrations, or curing services from the cloud. And as more deployment, we need, we need the, yeah, so easy deployments, more likely container deployment is very favorable to coach. And as all these integrated microservices that are loosely coupled and API based services that are restful. So, on the cloud, how my SQL we are doing? So, uh, Oracle Cloud, we call this Oracle Cloud Infrastructures, OCI. We have the point and click, okay, my SQL service, we call this my SQL database service, MDS. So, it is very just easy to use. We can bring this MySQL with different shapes. Okay, all depends what you need on the CPU, memory, and the configuration. It's just handy because all this like uh, like backup, securities, and things. And uh, the most important thing here is the extensions. We have the heat date auto and now, and it does the uh, accelerations, high performance, and big data. So what it does, uh, MySQL heat date auto and now. It is actually the, at the back, okay, we provision a set of cluster machines. And memory is used to store the data. So the data is just, is not just to store in NoDB on the frontier, but as well as to push, okay, to the back heavyweight cluster. So that facilitates, facilitates like in memory code. And it is in memory analytics. And it is very, very super fast. And there's one more additional thing. And now it's AI, machine learning. So the data, when we talk about machine learning, is to train, okay, the train as a model. So where the data is, likely the database, right? So it's actually in the base ML. So we provide this like capabilities in all in one. A one set of the solutions as like uh, the MDS, we provide OLTP, OLAP, as well as the machine learning capability and create your apps. So for today, uh, we talk more likely the deployments using container, okay, Kubernetes. And there might be possibilities a standalone MySQL to run as a server using Docker image. It's just simple. And there's also uh, another properties with MySQL in the DB cluster, and it can be deployed using MySQL operators, okay, 
uh, for the Kubernetes. So what today we are going to show you. So to operate, how we do this? So first of all, as to basic NASCAR MODP cluster, it is not new things. But uh, what we do here is to deploy this, okay, on this more easy platform container. And it is orchestrated uh, in the Kubernetes environments. The three most uh, stable set components, okay, down at the bottom, MySQL 0, MySQL 1, MySQL 2, okay, the three nodes cluster can be deployed, okay, and the largest can be three, can be four, can be two, can be one. So all of this, if you do it on your own, you have, we have to manage every component by ourselves, okay, as well as the right how apps to connect to the routers. So with the MySQL uh, operators, all of this just one kind of one single command, okay, and we deploy the whole set of the MOD because the three nodes, routers, and also the connectivity house to manage the up and down and bring one server down and then yeah, switch all this to the other, bring the data back, all this automatic, that's the operators. So how we do this? So basically, the, uh, we have the documentations and you can do it the remedy on the open source strategies that my SQL operator is, and we apply yeah, as the manifest uh, installation, we apply the CLD custom resource definitions that we create the resource, uh, the IC in ODP cluster company names. And when we close the running engine, my SQL operators as some of the helps, okay, to help you, okay, to facilitate all the operations, that that was some other things. And to create the cluster, it is just simple. It's create the YAML or after using hand chart. So here, <clears throat> as the manifest, we create a YAML file and then apply the YAML, it will create a cluster name. So second things. So people may also like to use hand chart. So it's also possible with the MySQL operators. So we have the repository and just to use. Um, and install the operator as the what somebody engine okay to handle the back and drops, the integrations, ground donations, and to install the MySQL uh in the DB cluster through the uh yeah the M chart. And the red text in here, so the TRS do self sign equal to true. So this is some additional uh possibly yeah, people may be miss okay. So I just put it down here. When we create, we can actually set this, okay, because we might not want to provide the certificate. Otherwise, we have uh, some more steps, okay, to provide the certificate in order to create the cluster. So as simply as uh, uh, in here, just to set this to true. So look at this, okay, the demo. So let me show the demos how we do this. Uh, to create the NODB clusters using MySQL uh, operators. So, <clears throat> we are going to deploy this HA models using uh, the latest versions of uh, 8.032 uh, operators. So, what's very right nice, I have already added the repository. And that's why I just to look up the repository and show the MySQL operators what it, what it has. There's two uh, trusts in there. One's the operator, one is the InnoDB cluster. So the first, very first things, we install the operator engines. So we just have install operators having the uh, namespace, the name, MySQL operators, and create a name. So just done. So we can actually look at what has been deployed. So we just look at the MySQL upload and see if it is already up and running. So it is up and running. And then look at the uh, GitHub uh, website. We can actually copy the tags. And here, that's how we do the hand installations for the InnoDB cluster. It is just very simple. Hand install, just a name. and. Uh, and this actually we use the MySQL uh, 
in the DB cluster and the namespace, just put a name. We have the myic01 and the user's group and the password is super secret and it can actually be logged in through anywhere. So three instances for the server, one router instance, and as mentioned earlier, we use self-sign. Okay. So once we have done this, and the server will be created uh, under this namespace, my IC01. So you can see, okay, it facilitates a lot. We do not need to create specific server one, server two, server three. So what this one single command, it create all these servers together, and as well as the routers, okay, and other so called servers, like okay, how we look up the IP address, because the IP, so all this is all done. So you can see it is still under the stage of provisioning. So it is on the stage of CO2 of T of T. So it is initialization of the DB. So after that, okay, in around two minutes time, so you can see that uh, 127 later on, we have three server up and running. Okay, so it is all in parallel, it's being created. Yeah, in parallel. And as well as you can see the services, okay, which is actually being created. Right now, the routers created finish. So there are four ports up and running. One is the three server and routers, four parts. And what we, we do here is we have the new name called, yeah, we have deployment, and we have the uh, IC, the InnoDB cluster, and which it has three online up running, and also the routers up and running. So what next is it tries to connect to the uh, bring up another port running my SQL shell and to connect to the server and then look up what is this happening. So, uh, look, so the secret my cluster and we try to look up the cluster status. So they are all up and running uh, with the latest versions 8.0.32. And the name right in there. So it is my cluster dash low dash one dash two. So let's look at another's uh, demos, which is what we are talking about. The, like, for example, the get banners. Okay. How we do this for banners deployments, it is also quite a popular dashboard language. And um, people may like to use manifest or hand chart. Okay. Uh, we will use manifest this time and how to add the data source. And add the data source, it is my SQL. But one thing is important. This graph founders or applications run as separate, separate um, namespace. So you may not know the IP address. Should we just to use IP address or use a more independent name, what we call external name? Now showing top. So here, this is uh, the deployment of the family using YAML files, and we have to look at look at the YAML file, which is the image for families and port number three thousands, and we may configure some sort of the source CPU and memory, as well as to create the load balances so that. I can actually log in from external IP address, right, through the internet to access to it. There's load balancers. So what we do actually we have this, and we can just to create a namespace of the families and apply the YAML file within that namespace. So you can see I just to apply this YAML file we just create.
And as well as you can see the YAML file create yeah, yeah, different level of surfaces, including the profile itself, as well as the load balance of surface. And once we run this to use, and we can look at the profile if it's up and running. So uh, still provisioning and getting more and more. And we can stretch soon to see it. And once we get this to it, what we do here is like how we can connect to the server. So we just look up the IP address. You can see the external IP address. And we just log in. And we can see the custom IP. OK. But sometimes we might not want this like, OK, IP address. Yeah, we, we never know. OK, another day when the server done out again. So the IP address will be changed. But anyway, in here, we can just to use the IP address in here. You see, yeah, it is, is it still working in here. So the rules of the sequence which we have just created. So and then we say the test the connection works. That's not nice. So what the next is, if we do not like to use the IP address, we want something as need. So the my cluster as the service to connect to it. But we are actually in two separate namespace. How can we do this? So what it allows to do this is to yeah to isolate them by means of loosely coupling and using the service and in the type external name and connecting to that name, we have to define with the my ICC01. So we apply this specific, okay, my custom YAML file and to define all this like namespace. So if we look at this, we have more names that we can use. So one of which is my cluster. And the my cluster is the point routing to the MySQL routers point. Meaning whenever there is any switching up and down, it will point to the right server and getting that to use. So that works. Uh, dashboard and we may get hookups to write specific a schema, performance schema, a specific table regarding my memory usage, something like that. So just take an example. So we add, uh, yeah, uh, two, three columns, allocations, how many, how much memory is free out and for specific events as well. So on this, we may actually be able to see that, okay, uh, uh, we, we, we have a report, okay, getting data. So, we may try to create this. So, all this, and we may actually create another one, select a version, another uh, uh, panel. So, within the dashboard, that's actually look up the server name, host name, and as well support and versions. So, once we have this, it is pointing to my cluster as the server name. So what we do here is we may change to primary cluster, okay, to somewhere else. This is nice little shell connecting to it and connecting to it and then switch this primary instance to another server. So what's up to this? Once we do this, we will have the server and change this to my custard tool for just an example. So we can actually change it to cluster two. So what we do here, the server just switched. And if we refresh the page, and what it does, the server connects to this, yeah, my custard as the router method here, it connects to the right servers, okay, which the primary server. So we can actually change another time. And so from the application point of view, it is seamless. It is just ease of use and automatic handy. Okay, the last bit of piece I want to show is uh, the way we are using the uh, PHP. So here's another quick demo. When we deploy PHP, 
my admins to my SQL InnoDB cluster. And last time, got done using YAML. And this time, as the services, we may actually do this by hand chart as well. We can uh, put in sort of PHP my admins, find somewhere else, or it's open source. And we have the Binami uh, hand chart, OK? And we have the hand chart create creations where we just to set the DB host equal to my cluster. Again, my cluster is the name. So basically, we provisions using the ham chart values. The values between the original and the edits. I just put the added okay to the ham chart report values to put in the certificates for the connections. So the PHP my admission connects to the server directly as the SSL connections. So I also put the load balances to enable uh, the browsers from internet what my, my, my machines can connect to it. So we can see the IP address and finally we get hookups to the servers. So well, we have the service up and running. So here IP address and the load balance which is one two nine some other things. And we just copy and paste and put it on to the into the page and we will find we log in. But the thing is we haven't yet to put in the external names. That's why when we connect it fails. Uh, now we go back in here. We need to provide extra okay the reference. Okay, regardless the my ICC one to my cluster on my service store. So what we have is again so my cluster YAMOS, which has all the external names for the servers. So we just register all this to the PHP my admin namespace. And once we have all this done, we can run this PHP my admin again. So it is just easy and handy. So it is all created. So with this, we just be in again. And done, and it is SSL connections. I hope this can go with the questions and see if anybody you have uh, any questions for us. Thank you.